the penultimate question. This is a <laughs> lot of pressure. It's a good thing she's adorable, right? You know that we're you know that we're judging your questions, right? That's okay, and I'm all I'm right with that. I'm not judging I'm at peace with that. All right, you're I, on it. Be, because I'm not at peace with him judging. Did, the did question. you have enough carrot juice to make you at peace with oh, that? Peter, yes, I did actually have a lot of carrot juice. Ninety-two references to carrot juice. I, I, did. I did. I actually have to go back and get more. Because I'm running. I'm running low. What are some? <laughs> See another multiple parter. What are some? Go ahead. <laughs> what are? What are some of the most important questions a screenwriter can ask themselves when developing a story idea? How much is it worth? <laughs> Ten points for each. That doesn't get you to a hundred. You know, I, I think one, one important question is how universal is it? And, you know, you may be having the most esoteric story, but if it touches everybody, it's a universal story. If it's very, very narrow, then, then it doesn't. And so you're always saying, how are people going to relate to this? Can anybody find something in this relationship I'm creating, in this conflict that I'm creating, that they recognize something? And hence, that's why you asked the, the mother-daughter uh, premise for the book, because you figured most people can relate. Well, almost it's a old, generic old, old premise, starting with my sister Eileen. Almost everybody has had a mother. I think I think I think it was uh, it was chosen because you could. Well, I don't know your background. I, you because know, you could do your born teacher. Well, she's a child of a single mother. She told us that. Yeah. If you'd been listening, um, I have a slightly different take on that. I I believe in the Stephen Sondheim dictum that the more personal a story is, and I don't mean by that autobiographical, that the more it matters to you, the more universal it's going to be. Yeah. And, um, but both things are valid. It depends on the writer. I will tell you that if you try to write something commercial, you will fail every time out. For example, when Die Hard was a success, there was one, there was one movie after another that came out with that kind of, you know, none of them were as good as Die Hard. And, and then, but but for every movie that came out like that, you know, hero in a in a trap place trying to save the world, whatever it is, with the sense of humor. Uh, yeah, with this, that's very important. Uh, there were hundreds of scripts that were written that never saw the light of anywhere. So, I I believe that you have to write what you want to write, and yeah, if look I, at look at what Go Ahead Make My Day did. You know, everybody tried to come out with that. And that wasn't a new concept when, when they when it was written. I mean, the bullet I was a, bullet worked same kind of idea. Bullet was a more stylish cop, but mm -hmm. uh, the Dirty Harry movies are great. They're really well made. They're kind of the the, the detective version of the the spaghetti westerns, you know. But having that one cool line yeah. at the key moment. That... But today, I don't think one cool line is going to make a great movie. Why? I think it was also the right actor for the right time for the late 60s, you know. Um, but I think the other thing you need is patience. To well, all the things we've been talking about today, the the ability to tolerate... Um, ambiguity. Amb <laughs> what? Ambiguity. Ambiguity. He likes that word because nobody else understands it. Um, uh, to tolerate failure to tolerate having to get up and try again the next day. No, no writing career can ever be made on one script. Um, I don't, there, you know, I really believe that you've got to write a lot and not judge it. Those are all things, we've talked about all this before, but yes, those are the things. And then of course, being willing to show your work. Mm. Not you waiting to show years. your work. If you're just gonna put your work in a drawer, and you're just doing it for your own pleasure, well, that's fine, but then don't say you want to be a professional writer. I'm waiting for the 19-part last question. <laughs> well, there was a follow-up to okay. something you said. Well, now. that's so cheating. <laughs> Let's go to the follow-up. The follow-up is... The penultimate you, point two. You said that most films could be based on, or, or the popularity could be based on one line, like... I'm paraphrasing, but go ahead, make oh, my the day, hook. or yeah, the hook, or you know, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn, something like that. But yeah, but that had nothing happen. to do with the plot of the movie. That was just that was character. That's just character, right?
but you don't feel that today could be well you still they want a hook before they want to hear the premise before they want to hear the story so we use in something we're working on now we used back to the future you know uh, uh the hook would be uh a young boy goes back in time to prevent his, to make sure his parents get married so he'll continue to exist i mean that's terrible i can't remember what we use that's a hook that's not a premise yet it's an idea for so to me a hook is it's it's an idea for a story um you know what you know it's not yet you still haven't developed the story the thing you brought in earlier about the two brothers is much more developed than that but in terms of a line sort of living on past the film you oh, think those... oh you mean why do you know why do lines live on yeah. past the film are we beyond that Today? No, I don't, don't think we'll ever be on that. Uh, be beyond that. I mean, you get a, you get uh, memorable lines. Uh, as recently as when Harry met Sally, what's the line you remember from? Oh, that? I'll have what she's exactly. Yeah. You know that line was improv. It wasn't even a scripted line. That was Rob Reiner's mom. That's Carl Reiner's wife. But wasn't that from the nineties? Yeah. I mean, so yeah. I mean, anything t today? Oh, you're saying now? So <laughs> well, I mean, well, I, mean we, I think we, well, yes. I there's one in a recent movie. That I don't know. Have you guys seen Get Out yet? Not yet on the okay. list. Well, I mean, I think, great... I think writers are always trying to write those lines, yeah. but and they're usually really self-conscious and and the, awkward. This wasn't because this is a movie. The only thing I can tell you about the movie it made you know it was made for nothing, and the guy was famous before he made it. The director is can feel it's wonderful. He had that show on on. Uh, on Comedy Central, and he knows everybody. And but this is his first direct. This is his directorial debut, and the movie wasn't expected to do well, and it's one of the most successful movies of the year. And there's a great line in it that I think will live on past the movie, and that's the premise of the movie is a, a, a white girl takes her black boyfriend to meet the parents. Mm. That's not what the movie's about at all, no. but that's all I can tell you. It'll ruin the movie for you. But the father, the first thing the father says to the to the black boyfriend, who's actually played to my wife's consternation by a British actor, uh, he says, um, you know, I would have voted for Obama for a third term. <laughs> now that line is brilliant. Mm -hmm. It's also in character. It has to do with the movie, but it's so witty. And it's so true that, that like, liberals like embarrassed liberals you know when they want to say something good in there around black it's part of what the movie is about that he that people will i mean he said in an interview that he gets that all the time from white liberals that you know well wish that i could have he could have had a third term you know uh but they're trying to show you how liberal they are so yes i think that i think peter's right i think we'll always have those just like we'll always but, but in Paris. It, <laughs> but it's just it's just bad when you see it self-consciously written. Like, I think I've just written that line. Yeah. Well, it, you know, hopefully you're a good enough writer to see that and take it out, you know. Um, the, the other thing that really bugs me in, in writing is when the writer makes a reference that obviously doesn't belong in the period or they're trying to be too contemporary, you know, too contemporaneous. They're trying to be too hip. You know, so they'll make a joke about something that nobody would have made a joke about. In, I, mean, I see that all the time. I've probably done it many times. Um, but again, a, a great line is great. It's great for advertising, but it doesn't make a great movie. You know, uh, Bruce, there's so many lines in Die Hard, but that's not why the movie was successful. I have a theory about why that movie was unique and successful. He wasn't there to save the world. He was there to get his wife out of the building. Mm -hmm. And that's what made it human, you know? And, and uh, a lot of these, like Speed, which was a big success, which followed it, was such a contrived situation. You know, a bus that if it goes below, you know, a certain, you know, it'll blow up. I mean, come on. And then they manipulate you by having the old trick, which is everybody's used, of having the partner killed, which raises the stakes, which can work. It worked great for, um, oh, come on, help me out, um, uh, Lillian Hellman's boyfriend, who was blacklisted, um, uh, you know, a great mystery writer. Well, it's been used in a zillion movies. Yeah, but who was it? He was the guy who did it better than anybody in... Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, the movie about the 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 birds um oh, like you know where there was something in the the stuff that dreams are made of is a classic line that we'll always we'll always know what, and that's from that? uh, maltese falcon oh okay what what line was it yeah um it's the stuff that you know when he oh, sees right. what's mm -hmm. inside the birds you know it's the stones or whatever it is he says he's you know it's the it's the thing everybody's the MacGuffin that everybody's been looking for and he says ah the stuff that dreams are made of it's great right and and then the other line in that movie that I love is, I'm not going over for you, sweetheart. <laughs> Meaning I'm not going to jail for you. <coughs> I love that movie. It's so well written. Dashiell Hammett, thank you for helping me so much with I'm that. I'm always there for you. <laughs>